Alright, we're going to demo the old-fashioned one-two punch. Everybody going to do it again here just to show you what it looks like. Uh, the one-two, the way I teach it, is a jab right hand thrown off of one step. I want to separate this now from what we just showed you about the shuffle step after a jab. We'll go back to that in a minute when we demonstrate two jabs in a straight right hand. But right now, we want to talk about in the old-fashioned one-two punch, which is thrown right from the chin after a jab, and it's thrown on one step. One step only. Jab, right hand. Dean, come on in. Here's how this looks. Let's just do it slowly. Just do it slow. Just bam, bam. Perfect. Bam, bam. That's it. Now, what he did was perfect. And I, this is a point that I really want to make about the one-two. When you're practicing it, wherever you practice it, you practice it on a double-end bag, you practice it with your training partner, with the mitts, with your coach, on the heavy bag, wherever it is, in front of the mirror, I don't care where it is, you want to get the feeling of this type of sound and this type of motion on the one-two. It's got to be a... It's not two together real quickly, it's not that won't do it. Or it's not that's too slow. It's got to be a it's got to be like that. Why is that? Because we don't want all the power on the jab. We're saving the power for the big punch, which is the right hand. So we're only going to have maybe 65% of our power on that jab, and it happens with this kind of a feel. Bang, bang. Not bang, bang, and not a very slow bang, bang, but a good rhythmic, that's the one, two. That's what we want. All right, Dean, come on in. Very important that you understand it. Another good coaching point here on the one, two, if you feel that you're too slow with it, sometimes it's good to use numbers and count to yourself. Just go one, two, one, two. You can try that. It's, it's pretty good. I've used it myself. I've used it with fighters, and they've had some success with it and feel that it helps them a little bit. Just count to yourself. But Here's the one, two, off of one step. Perfect. Perfect. If you'll notice, the jab is good. It's solid, but it's only about a 65% jab. The big punch is the right hand that comes right behind it. Let's try it again. And off of one step only here, and you're holding your weight back a little bit. You're not declaring all of your weight forward. I want to make that point on the jab so that you're not going... One, and you're out here. No, it's one, and my weight is still, still back a little bit on this back foot, so that I've got some power in the right hand. Let's try it again. Good. Remember, come all the way through. You're still cutting the right hand off a little bit. That's it. That's it. One more time. That's the idea. Okay, now let's go to two jabs and a straight right hand. A good combination. You're able to drive your opponent back across the ring. You're in a position now where you've taken control. You've got him moving backwards. Two jabs and a straight right hand, and you'll follow that with either a left jab or a left hook. That's optional. But the point is you're building up speed on every step so that the second jab, the step on the second jab is a little faster than the step on the first. And by the time you get to the right hand on the third step or shuffle step, you've gained pretty much speed. You've gained maximum speed for the punch. Then the left hook or jab that comes afterwards, merely a punch that gets you back into position. So we'll do it uh, kind of at about half speed, Dean, so that we can get the idea of how this builds up. We'll start off with Two jabs. We won't, go, we won't show the left hook or the uh, left jab follow in the first combo. I just want to get the speed buildup of the first three punches. Bam. Bam, bam. That's the idea. <laughs> Building up speed. Bam, bam, bam. Good. Excellent. You notice he built up speed as he stepped in. We don't want to lose speed here. We don't, want, we don't want the first step on the jab to be faster than the step on the right hand. Try it again. Excellent. Lock that right hand out. Give me a little more lock out on the right hand. That's the idea. Now, when we finish that right hand, once again, we want to get back into our good boxing position. We want to get back in where we're safe. Where are we always safe? Hands up, chin down, in this position. This is the position we want to be in. His jab or his hook 
after the right hand we're getting back into that position. Let's just keep the steps and everything a little uh, shorter in here. Bam, 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 bam. Excellent. Okay, let's try it again. Two jabs, straight right hand, either a jab or left hook. Bam, 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 bam. Excellent. Going out low once again. He's back in good boxing position. Let's try it with a jab on the fourth one. All right? Bam, 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 bam. Excellent. Okay, try it again one more time. Watch the feet. He's building up speed. Coaching point here, building up speed, and bringing your feet along with you. He's not way out here. Head is equidistant between the legs. Balance is good. Knees are flexed. Everything's ready to strike. Okay. Bam, 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 bam. Good. All right. Next punch I want to show is two jabs and an overhand right. Overhand right. Very good punch. Uh, not the best punch in the world for a tall man to use. Can be used effectively. It's a much better punch for a shorter fighter who has trouble reaching his opponent's chin. Not so good for a tall guy because he now has to crouch down, and if he's in against a shorter guy, it's putting him in a position to get hit himself. Much better for a short man, but we'll demonstrate it here. Two jabs, and then he will drop. We'll do this very slowly so that you can see it. Jab, grab, drop, bam. Overhand right. Come over the top a little bit more. One good point here is, as I, j am I jab, jab. Now, when I drop, I should do some kind of a cover here or here. The old A. I can wrap my left arm around my chin, but I want to have some coverage here as I drop in there so that I don't get hit with a counter punch or maybe an elbow or something that I don't need to get hit with. Okay, let's try it again. Bam, bam. That's it. And now over the top. Bam. Right over the top. Excellent. Try it again. He's covered. He's dropping. And he's throwing the overhand right. Once again, a, a very good punch for a slugging type shorter opponent against a taller man who is vulnerable to this type of a punch. Not so good, once again, for a tall, rangy fighter. No need for him to uh, be dropping down, throwing overhand rights. He can stay with his good jab, stay at long range, box at long range with his jab and right hand. For, shorter, uh, for a shorter man, Excellent punch, something every short fighter who does not have long arms should have in his repertoire. It's a must. Let's try it again, Dean. Good cover now, just nice and relaxed. Bam, 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 and over, bam. Excellent. 